Hi everyone. It's been a while. I'm sorry I tried to do this live for Freddie Boy and Jess last week on Friday and my computer uh, crashed and had a virus so I couldn't film it. So sorry Jess, it's taken me so long to answer this question because it's an important one and um, I've been wanting to get to it. So um, you've probably been following a little bit of uh, Jess's story. She wrote in a few weeks ago uh, the first time. Um, she was asking about her elderly love, Freddie Boy, uh, an old staffy. and initially her question that I answered was about going for walks. She has two dogs and two little kids and she found the elderly dog, Freddie, wasn't keeping up and uh you know he, he just couldn't cope going for the walks anymore but he also couldn't cope being left alone at home and there was a lot of anxiety amongst the dogs and the family when she was splitting them so we were kind of brainstorming some ways that she could manage that scenario um so we've been, we've been suspicious that uh freddie had severe arthritis or, or some spinal pain because of the symptoms Jess told us he was having. And since we had that original chat, uh, Jess did go to the vet and um, they have diagnosed degenerative disc disease, so um, a spinal or intervertebral disc problem. Now, she went on with a referral to get a CAT scan done and when she was there, from what I understand, the vet explained to her that the next step after the CT scan would be, if they wanted, a invasive spinal operation. And the quotes she was getting were about $2,000 for the CAT scan and about another $8,000 for spinal surgery. So I'm so glad, Jess, that your vet talked to you about that because you know, there's no point spending this huge amount of money, $2,000 on a CAT scan, if uh, the surgical route is not one that, that you want to go down. So that was good because sometimes the conversation happens after that scan and then people feel like, wow, I wish I never did that. Um, so, yeah, so now from what we understand, the surgical route is not an option that Jess and her family want to go down with Freddie. Um, and they're just looking at ways now to keep Freddie comfortable in his twilight years. Um, so Freddie Boy's got intervertebral disc disease. So this is a condition where the cushioning, imagine there's little pillows or little cushions between the vertebra. So the cushioning discs between the the vertebrae are acting as shock absorbers basically for the spinal column. I feel like I should straighten my back as I'm talking about this. Um, so these discs can either rupture or herniate or they can bulge. And when they do that, they put pressure on the spinal cord um, and the space around that. Now, when the spinal cord nerves are compressed from these bulging discs, then the nerve impulses aren't able to transmit, okay, uh, or at least they're not able to transmit properly. And so you get various symptoms in the body, but typically you get weakness or lameness or paralysis of the back legs. You can get loss of bladder control, uh, loss of the bowels, um, so they lose control of their toileting. Um, and if anyone is listening and they've had a dash hound or a basset hound, then you probably know a bit about intervertebral disc disease because these breeds with, you know, the, due to the conformation of their bodies when they have a very long abdomen and a long spine with little short legs, um, that puts a lot of pressure on their spinal column and it makes them more at risk of injury. So the symptoms of IVDD, which is intervertebral disc disease, uh, is usually an unwillingness to jump up. They don't want to get in the car. They don't want to jump up on the bed or the couch like they used to. Uh, they're kind of balk at jumping. Uh, hind leg lameness or weakness uh, or in severe cases, paralysis, obviously a sign that can yelp in pain. They can sometimes have anxious behaviour, which I remember from the, Jess's original post, she said that there was some anxiety. Um, 
Now, muscle spasms over the back and being hunched up in their neck with tense muscles, they're also signs of intervertebral disc disease. And so when you were experiencing these signs, you, like Jess, probably get down to your vet. They're going to talk to you about, um, you know, possible diagnosis. And when they do that, they will look at the dog's history, what kind of breed they are, what symptoms that you're reporting. Um, and then as just as experience with having been recommended a CT scan, uh, we need then diagnostics to confirm our suspicions. So plain x-rays, which is just your basic radiology at your, your general practice vet, can help. They can show a decreased kind of space between the, um, between the intervertebral, it's called the intervertebral space. It can be reduced so the discs are looking narrower. That can assist the diagnosis. But to get a proper diagnosis, you really need uh, contrast x-rays where we put in a dye or MRIs or CAT scans are even better because then we can assess the extent of the compression and that can give us a lot of information about how bad it is and the best treatment. So the recommended treatment plan can vary a lot based on how they present their clinical signs and the findings on the scan. Some are really mild and they're fine with just anti-inflammatories and a strict rest. Um, Others need a really invasive spinal operation. So, um, yeah, it's it's a difficult one to give advice on generally because there's so many uh, varying stages of this condition. Now, Jess says that Johnny Boy is having some really good days lately, so I'm so glad to hear that. And um, she's also said that she's looking at management options and wanting to keep him comfortable for as long as he can. And there's been some comments on her post about things that have worked for other people. And I love that. I'm really encouraging everyone to share their experiences because I can give generalized textbook advice, you know, and I can give you advice on the patients I've seen, but it's also valuable as a community to share our own experiences. Um, I learn things and you can teach each other things, especially things that are uh, maybe alternative remedies that are newer and there's less research on it. It's harder for me to give that advice with surety but um, if you guys are experiencing good results with it, then by all means, it's great to share. So there are some things that can make Johnny more comfortable. And I'm sure, Jess, you're talking about these with your vet uh, and you've probably started some of them. But I'm just going to list through some options for you just to do your own reading about, have a think about, um, and also feel free if you're someone else re watching this to share your stories if you've done any of these things or if you have any other suggestions that I've missed. Um, so typically non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are our first protocol. Um, meloxicam is the, one of the most common ones we use. It's, it has side effects like all drugs and it's important that we give it with food. It's important that we check the kidney um, enzymes before we give it and that our patients have regular blood tests. So um, while it can lead to fantastic results, it's something that you need to keep working with your vet in monitoring the side effects. Tramadol is another drug that I use in a lot of elderly arthritic dogs. It's a good palliative care option. Um, again, like all drugs, it, it has its downsides. So you do have to use it closely with your vet and ongoing rechecks and make sure that it's it's doing it's having a positive effect and not a, not a negative one. Uh, carpets throughout your house. So you need to have non-slip flooring everywhere. And yoga mats are useful, but as you said, you've got little kids and they're probably going to last about 20 seconds um, before they're rolled up or used um, for something else that you don't want them to be. Uh, so there is another thing that I'll suggest, and that's these non-skid flooring that have those interlocking, they look like giant jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle pieces, and they're often in the bottom of play 
centers or or play areas i think you can get them from kmart or bunnings i've got some that we're going to put down for our puppy crate area uh, so that is good because you can do a large space and it's cost effective you know you don't have to put carpet down in your home uh, so in the space where johnny's hanging out those interlocking soft flooring might be a good idea uh, there's acupuncture that's uh, lots of people have wonderful results with acupuncture there's a fabulous acupuncturist that I work with on the Gold Coast who I can recommend to you uh, CBD oil has been a popular suggestion so you can speak to your vet about that physiotherapy is wonderful especially if those um, surrounding muscles getting very tense um, doing some exercises to release that can can help ease the pain um, and also just in terms of the household arrangements, just think about where Johnny is located and make sure that he's kind of, if when he wants to be, and I assume he'll want to be being a staffy and a family dog, that he'll want to be right in amongst the action all the time. So make sure, particularly on his bad days where he doesn't want to get up and move around, that his bed is right where the kids are playing or right um by the tv or near the dining table somewhere where he can feel a part of things because if he feels secluded it might make him anxious uh, but you'll be the best judge of that you know if he he might also want space um, and a break from the kids so just be mindful of moving him and assisting him depending on how he's feeling uh, another trick is you can raise his food bowl and his water bowl on a few bricks. So if you imagine um, the spine can be in a more neutral position if their drinks and food bowl is a bit raised, so that can help mitigate any pain with a lot of bending and moving. And I know you've got kids, so you probably have baby gates. So if you do have stairs, lock them off with baby gates. Um, <clears throat> there's another thing called towel walking. Now, that's where you get a towel and you wrap it around the abdomen um, and you kind of sling them in it. So you've got it under their tummy and wrapped around. And if they are feeling weak and having painful days, you can use that towel to kind of hold some of the weight for them so they can uh, move about a bit easier. So, for example, for elderly dogs that are on palliative care that do have really painful bad days and they're not using their back legs, um, then I tell owners to towel walk them outside to go to the toilet. Uh, so that can be helpful. Now that brings me on to the quality of life question and how long do you keep going with these kinds of things? When do you know that it's time to consider euthanasia? And um, oh, like we can do a whole nother video on that grieving process if you want to, because that's a big one. And uh, it's yeah there's a lot to talk about there and I don't think we can really cover it properly uh, but I do want to mention some things about quality of life and I think you do have my book Jess so it's on page 286 if you have it um, we're talking about elderly dogs and making the decision of euthanasia or not so there's some questions in here about their quality of life you know is your dog eating um, are they motivated by food or you know I, are they showing that like they're just they're so fed up that not they're not even a food bowl is worth getting up for and that's very unusual for them that would be a really that would be a bad sign um, how comfortable is the dog is the dog sleeping how about their toileting behavior are they able to to jump up and go out to the toilet whenever they want or is it really difficult and are they painful or even worse sometimes are they wetting the bed or, or defecating in their beds um, there are some questions on page 288 about assessing uh, their quality of life in terms of measuring hurt and pain, hunger, hydration, hygiene, happiness and mobility and also if they're having more good days than bad days. And I think from what you've said, we're having more good days than bad days at the moment, so that's really good. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot to talk about around grieving too. So when it comes to that we can do another video if you feel open to it um or if not there's lots of lovely resources to read about grieving the loss of a dog and the euthanasia process in um on the internet and also in my book okay 
Thank you, guys. Jess, I'm sorry this has taken me so long to do, um, but I hope that answers your question. If you have any more questions about this area, just pop it in the comments and I'll address it in the comments section. Have a lovely day. Bye, guys.